All right, hey everybody, my name is Jansen, and this is Chris, and we are dental students at the Medical University of South Carolina, MUSC in Charleston, and we are making this video to teach you a little bit about this software called Geomagic Control X. We did some research this summer with dental intraoral scanners, and you use this software uh, to be able to get our data for our projects. And it's a really great software, but it's also kind of confusing. Um, it's used a lot in the aerospace industries and the manufacturing industries. And we got a lot of help figuring out all the pieces that we needed. So we just wanted to make this video kind of comprehensive of a lot of the tips and tricks that we know uh, when you're comparing two different scan models. And we're going to show you all the different features uh, that we know to use. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to import a model. So this is the Geomagic window. Let me go up here and import. On our desktop we have right here, we have what's gonna be our master file. So you need, um, you need your reference data or your master data that you're gonna compare all your other scans to. So here it is, it imports. You'll get some kind of random funky color and this is uh, the view. If you want to rotate the model, you can click with the right click and you can drag on top of the model like that. If you want to rotate it, move the cursor out here, click off the screen a little bit and it'll do more of a, more of a true rotation. Um, if you click with the left button, it's more your selection tool. And if you want to click with both buttons, excuse me, that's not working. Um, uh, to move it around. If you want to zoom in, you can use the wheelbar, the scroll on your mouse. And we just want to point out the fact that this is a hollow model, um, even though we know that the jaw, or in this case, a physical impression, was uh, obviously in 3D, but we just note that this is a 3D model, and it's made up of thousands of tiny little pixel points. If you zoom in, you can kind of see those almost between all those little pixel points make up these triangles. So what this is, is they'll refer to it as a mesh. If you ever see a 3D mesh, it's tons of little data points with vectors that combine them. And that's what we're working with. So here's our 3D model. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to be able to trim this model. So what we're going to do is we want to delete some of the extraneous data and Kind of what, basically what we want to do is we want to get rid of anything that's going to mess up our compares later on. So when we go to compare this to another one, we only want to compare certain areas. So obviously, this is a physical impression. We don't really care about land area or any of this extra things that happen on the on the tabletop. You don't want to get the uvula or the tongue or anything like that. So the way to do that is to go first. Um, you want to go into this measured tab, and for some reason you have to be in this measured tab. It's not really a mode, but it kind of acts like one. Before you, you're looking for this tool right here, what we found to be our favorite, the lasso selection, and that lets you do a freehand drawing. So you click that, and then you're just going to find an area on the model. You're just going to drag over it, kind of like so. And the colors are pretty similar, but hopefully you can see that, that dotted line. And when you let go of the button, you have selected that area. Now, what we want to do now is we're basically just going to hit the delete key on our keyboard. Yeah? So you, uh, you make a selection. Notice that the dotted line, there's a straight dotted line that connects back to your origin. And then when you're ready, you just hit the delete key. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna pop up this delete mode, if you will. And this is this floating gray box is really what mode you're in. And you'll see as we go along, this changes. Um, and this check mark right here is a way to save your work, so to speak, and to also close out of that mode. So what we've done is we've removed these those thousands of data points from that area, and we can rotate it. Now we can see that it's missing, and that is gone. So our lasso selection is our favorite. What we'll do is kind of do it in some pieces. And kind of go around like this and delete. Now, we'll come back to these little floating residual pieces in a second. As you're going along, you delete those points. Now, the floating pieces come from this thing right here. Now, we've uh, left it in its default value, but it says visible only. Now, the way it's selected 
currently, it's only going to select data points or delete data points that are physically visible to you at that moment. Um, so yeah, let's let's get an example. So uh, to show you what we mean, let's say we want to take off part of these teeth right here. So let's make a selection and let's just delete. Now, if you notice, we've got a hole in the model like you'd expect, but we can see through it. Yeah. Now, if you notice, the rest of the model back here, the underside is still there. Now, if we turn this off, it's going to cut through every piece that goes perpendicular to wherever you're drawing. So, so let's do a very similar thing, but now we see that there's a little bit of, um, let's see, was that palette? A little bit of palette area that's overlapping behind. So if we draw a similar circle, and delete. Now we've cut through the entire model. Can you see that? There's a hole, but there's also a hole through there. So that's really good to know. We we really love how it is right now, the you know, turning that feature off so you don't get some of these extraneous little pieces. But it's also really good to know if you if you rotate your model like this and you start trying to trim off some of this ex, extra, well, the way I've done it, you're gonna cut off some palette. So you just wanna be really aware of that, talking that back and forth. Okay, so obviously this looks pretty ugly, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna to wanna to trim up your model to whatever you want. You're gonna go around kinda of like this. Perhaps you want to take off some of this back here. And the reason we're doing this is because later when we go to do a compare, the computer is only going to compare data points that match on both your master, as in your reference, and your measuring, your, your measured model. So if there's a data point that's missing from the reference, but it's present on the measured model, it's not going to include that, but also vice versa. If it's there on the reference, but not there on your measure model, it's not going to include it in your comparison. So we wanted to trim up our model to exactly how we wanted it going forward. And then if you're like us, you're going to compare lots of different scans to that model, to that master, excuse me. So if you trim up your master and make it perfect once, then you've done a lot of the work for yourself in the future. Now, this is what your, this is what ours looked like when we trimmed our master. See, we got rid of all that. We, we spent a lot of time making it very clean. So that is trimming. Okay, now we're going to import our next one. We're going to import um, our measure data. Now, I'm going to go back to where we were just a second ago with this pink one. And you can exit out of this for all done uh, deleting points. And what you're going to do is you're going to tell the software that one model and only one model is going to be your reference, but they always get imported into this measured category. So over here on this pane, you click or you shoot, you right click and you say move to reference. Now just know that this is a permanent uh, use. This is something you can't undo. And we've had a little bit of trouble trimming it later. It's, it's possible we've had trouble doing that. So uh, basically get your, get your reference model as perfect as you want it before you go to, to set it as a reference data. You can just skip this for now. We're going to come back to something similar in the future. Now you have your reference. So let's go, so let's pick up our project file where we left off. And you see we've uh, imported it into reference. Now we're going to bring up another model. So here we have an emerald scanner scan. And it throws it on the 3D space. Okay, now this is, a good, is an important point to note here and that these things are floating in 3D space. And if you've never really worked with modeling software before, that's a really important thing. There's no tabletop, right? There's no wall that these things are butted up against. You have a fake origin right here, but again, it's just floating in space. So um, if you were to, let's say, go to this tool that we really didn't use, but if you wanted it, you could send this thing flying to the right, to the left, up and down, um, and they have no they're, they're not locked in anywhere. Now that, that's that's kind of an important thing because now we want to align these models uh, so that they are locked in in space. So we're going to go through uh, the alignment and then we're going to take a break and get to the next chapter. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is just an initial alignment. And there's really nothing to this, really no settings to, um, to really understand, uh, but what this is going to do is it's going to uh, calculate how these models best fit together, right? How they nestle together. And that's what we want to do. So uh, you have to do the initial alignment before you do a best fit alignment. 
Uh, you can't do one without the other. And this is going to only take a couple seconds, but you're just going to initial align them and it should throw them around, calculate. And you see that these models are now locked in step together and they're a little overlaid. Now, and you know, they're different, obviously, and that's what we want to compare later on. So sometimes the blue shows through, sometimes the gray shows through, um, but what you see are two models. So, um, oh, and like Jansen mentioned earlier, uh, the excess of the, the measured data model, um, that's not going to be included in the comparison later. Uh, so don't get freaked out if there's a lot of excess hanging off. Um, you don't have to trim each individual measured model as you import them. Um, so just want to make that clear. Yeah, that's awesome. So we have our initial alignment done, and this pane over here is almost kind of like a history. It's kind of like a browsing history, and it's got different categories for you already, but you'll see as we do these different alignments and do these different compares, you're going to see them logged over here. So you see our initial alignment right here. Um, let's, let's delete that. If you ever want to undo, you just go back here and delete. Um, and I'm going to show you this feature that I skipped a second ago. Basically, there's this thing that says uh, enhance alignment accuracy. Now, we found that the preliminary initial alignment that takes about 10 seconds, that is good enough for us. Those models nestling together. But sometimes you'll have it where it doesn't really calculate it correctly. And we had our teeth basically face in opposite directions. It thought that 180 degrees off was the best way to do it. And so if something happens like that, you can tell it to take a little bit more time, slow down a little bit, could, you know, consider some more points. And, um, and that's this feature you want right here. So let's, you know, for our purposes, it's going to look the same. But if you ever have a trouble with that initial alignment, that might be something that you want to toggle on. Now, this one takes a little bit longer, uh, but it's going to come up with about the same result. We're going to wait for it to think for a second. All right, so there we go. Um, and now that's going to do best fit alignment. Now this is going to really nestle in those two models together. So best fit alignment, you've got some things here. We never really changed those, um, but you got lots of options if you want. Now, we're going to come back to this in a minute, but it, it's good to know that it's taking when it does this best fit alignment, it's considering every single data point on all the models, right? So it's taking, or I guess a better way to say it is it's considering the whole model compared to the other whole model. So in a minute, we're gonna come back to this use selected data only. We'll show you how to refine that. But for right now, we want to just run the best fit alignment. And you're, you know, we really didn't see much change. Our initial alignment was pretty spot on, but now these things are locked in and ready to go. All right, we just want to point out a couple quick things that we didn't uh, highlight in the last segment of this video. Um, one of them is just, just about viewing, uh, right? We talked about you can rotate with the right button on your mouse. You can select data you know, with the lasso tool. But what we didn't talk about was moving this model right to left on your screen. And it's pretty simple. All you do is hold the control button on your keyboard and then click the right button on your mouse, just like you were going to rotate. What it's going to do now is it's going to shift it left, right, up and down. And this is pretty helpful as you're moving around, you're zooming in, you kind of move it to the side, right? So I think we just forgot to point that out. I wanted to make a, a note of that. And then let's zoom in for a second. I just wanted to show you what we're talking about with all the triangles and data points. Um, again, we talk about how this is made up of thousands of data points. And every single one of those data points ends up being a vertex on one of these little virtual triangles, right? So um, it, the over here, you have some view options. And we're kind of in the smooth looking one, but you can, uh, you can go to this option, you start to highlight the triangles. There's one you look at only the data points, uh, but this is really what we're looking at. So just some, just some perspective, you've got some other view options here, um, if that helps you see whatever you're working on a little bit better. Now, um, now what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about something called the resegmenting tool. All right, Chris? Yeah, and so the resegmenting tool um, is a really useful tool. Um, to help us with the alignment. Uh, and so uh, remember earlier we talked about the initial alignment and then the best fit alignment. Uh, and then when we selected the best fit alignment, it came up with the option of using selected data only. Um, and right now, the model that we have is just one giant region. Uh, and so in order to use selected data, we have to create those regions uh, using the resegmenting tool. Uh, and so our study allowed us to uh, basically select, uh, for, for instance, uh, just the teeth. And so we were able to uh, create regions um, that just show the teeth and align both the master and the measured model 
um, to the teeth and ignoring every other data point. Uh, so that's a really useful tool uh, that we're, Jansen's going to show you how to use uh, right now. Yeah, this is really helpful because what you could do is, you know, when you go to align the models, you could align them for just a specific area, but that area could be different than the thing that you're actually measuring, right? So we'll show you this again in a second, but like as Chris was saying, we for our study, we wanted to align only considering the teeth. We didn't want the computer to think about the palette when it aligned the models. But then when we would go to the 3D compare, right, and tell it to calculate the deviations, we wanted to actually look at the palette region. So doing this kind of dividing the one big region into smaller regions helps you customize that for different parts of the process. Okay, so um, as you see right now, as you come over the edge, you can see how it all highlights as one big region. Now that's the term that the software uses to talk about, um, you know, groups of data points, basically. So um, we got this new tab over here called the region tab. And that's what we're gonna be working in. And that only works if you uh, already have something in the reference data. So if for some reason you forgot to do that, go back and watch the first segment. Um, but this tab is only gonna appear if you have something as your reference. Because you can't segment, or you can't re-region the measured data, only the master data or master file, right? So, um, okay, so you got two tools up here. You got a split tool and a merge tool. Um, but before, and those are pretty self-explanatory, but before we do that, we wanna tell it, hey, make this into a ton of different regions. And so right here, we're gonna click the resegment tool. So I'm gonna click that. Um, this is, this pop-up is just telling you it's gonna affect your results and your data, but that's perfect. That's exactly what we want it to do. Let's click okay. All right, now you just have to select the regions that you want to resegment, which is kind of like a like a massive dividing function. So we want to click this one region because it's the only region we have. You can play around with these sliders, make it a little bit more sensitive or not. And we're going to run this. Now, as it's running, just give you a little bit of perspective. Um, this actually was something that we stumbled upon and we thought we messed up our whole project. As you see in a just a second, it's going to look like confetti. And it turned out to be the best thing that we came up on. So what it's going to do is it's it's almost like the computer's thinking this is a milled part. Oh, there we go. Okay, so look, it looks god awful. I mean, it looks terrible. I and mean, we thought, what did we do? We messed up our whole thing. But what it did was it just calculated tons of different little regions. So now you see when we highlight, it doesn't select the whole model. It just shows these different areas. Right now, these are automatically, and they're rough. Sorry, that's going to kind of be the name of the game for this part. You're not going to get a lot of smooth edges. Um, and then look down next to my cursor. It says cylinder right there, plane. And what this tool basically does is it's trying to look at this shape. That's actually really organic, right? There's not a lot of perfectly smooth planes. We don't have any, you know. Um, anything with a perfect diameter or radius or something like that, but it's it's thinking along those lines. It's thinking, okay, if this was a part that I found in a factory, what are these things? So it, it thinks, hey, this is a part of a cylinder. It thinks this is part of a cone. You'll find things that look like uh, look like you know something random and it calls it a sphere. So that, that's not a really big deal, but that's just kind of some importance um, or some perspective of what's going on here. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the tools. Now we're gonna do a split tool and then we're gonna talk about the merge tool. Now, um, so I would say that the split tool um, behaves a little bit differently than you think, whereas the merge tool is exactly exactly what you think. So the split tool, um, we can go ahead and highlight and it's gonna do kind of what you think it's gonna do, right? We're gonna take one of these small new small regions and we're gonna split it into smaller regions. We're gonna chop it up. Um, okay, so what's interesting about this though is that it acts very differently depending on a couple things. The first thing it depends on is where you start clicking and where you end clicking. Okay, so that's one thing it, it, it's gonna, gonna matter. The other thing is it's gonna act differently if you click one point and then click another point versus if you click, hold, and drag. So um, we're gonna we're kinda go through this piece by piece and explain um, how all how the split tool works in all those different ways. Okay, so let's say let's actually let's let's go right here. Let's go to this bicast bid. So um, okay, so the first one is we're just gonna do a click and a click. Okay, so if we click on this orange Pangea right here, 
we're going to try to split that into a couple pieces. If we click on one side outside of it, and you, I'm not holding the button down, I'm just moving across, and you click through on the other side, what it's going to do is it's going to kind of turn purple. That purple means it's, it's good to go. Orange means you need another click or maybe need to select a different area. But purple is good to go. If we click right now, it's going to split that piece into two. Right, so it, it didn't affect where we started or we, where we ended um, because of exactly how we did it. Right, we click, we click, and it just went through one piece. Okay, so now you've got two different regions. If we were to go out of this, you could see that we could highlight one or highlight the other. Okay, so that's one. Now let's say we are we we're doing clicking still. We're not dragging, but we're inside a face. Let's find a bigger face. Let's go to this green one over here. So if you click and drag, we're gonna kind of draw an outline. Okay, and it's going to split it out from the rest. There we go, and make a new region. Now, um, sorry to say, but this is going to make some jagged edges. Um, it's just, again, like I said a second ago, the name of the game, um, because it's constrained to those triangles, right? You can kind of see as I'm highlighting, it's constrained to those triangles, so you're never gonna get a perfectly straight line, but you um, can go back and forth between split and merge and make it um, as smooth as you need to be for your project. Okay, so that's that's clicking and dragging. Now, um, let's say we click and drag, but we're gonna cover a couple different regions, okay? Now, this is what kind of took us by surprise. Let's go to uh, something that has a lot of color. Okay, so down here, let's say we're gonna click and drag, and we're gonna overlap a lot of different regions. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, if you see, it made this new region, right? And in, what it didn't do was it didn't split those 10 regions into smaller regions. It actually took a piece from all those regions and made one new region, right? So you can kind of say it's like it's isolating that from the rest of the model, right? Or it's the, the area you circled, it's splitting from the rest of the model and making a new piece, okay? So, um, so now watch what happens though. If let's say we do a similar thing, we're gonna include this new piece and we're gonna get something new. We get this blue and purple. We want something go something like that. Okay. Now look, what it didn't do was it didn't make a new full circle. It added on to this new piece that we were making. Yeah. So um, that's something kind of important to know about the split tool. Now over here, you know, we talk about what mode we're in. We talk about this check mark. It kind of saves your work and kind of finishes. Well. You know, when we were deleting and trimming our model, we didn't need to click that check mark every time we deleted something. We just selected an area, hit delete. Select another area, hit delete. And we didn't have to click the check mark every time. But the split tool is a little bit different because while you're still in the split tool, doing what we just did, make a big circle and kind of isolate an area, it's kind of like that is still very um, very flexible almost, right? It's not really solidified or saved as a new separate region until you click the check mark. So that's why it acted the way it did a second ago and kind of added on, kind of tacked on this area to the new region. So we could do that again right here. Again, because we haven't clicked the check mark, it's gonna add on to that new orange region. Okay, see how it's working? So, um, so in that way, it's almost like it's working as a merge tool, right? It's almost taking a lot of things and combining them. So you could, you know, which kind of wanted to, to kind of talk about in some detail and it took up um, some of y'all's time, but it's just really important to know what you're working with because I, otherwise you might end up accidentally merging your whole model or a whole tooth when you meant to split it up some more. So what we ended up doing was we would do something like that. We'd circle an area and then click the check mark. And it's going to say that as a as a new region, right? Kind of lock it in. You change the color, cool. That's great. Okay. Um, but now, if we will go back to the split tool and do the same kind of thing, it's going to act kind of almost like, well, how I thought it would work originally. It's going to take a piece of that green to make a new piece, right? So what what we ended up doing was clicking check mark, and then hitting this, going back into split mode again. So you're going to toggle back and forth, back and forth. Um, okay, one other um, awesome feature is this limit to region. Um, and so let's say you are trying to refine this. Let's say you've got a, an edge that you really need to fix. Let's say maybe this purple region is too big. You want to take off this finger over here. You can click limit to region, and now it's not going to let you click and drag. It's just going to pick a, a region or a couple regions, right? So we're going to hit this pink one, I guess the color of your understanding. 
And now, whatever we do, if we click on this side, click on this side, or drag and circle, it's only going to affect that purple region. So I really personally like this because um, I know I'm not going to accidentally bite off more of the model than I meant to. So I'm going to click, I'm going to drag, remember the circle like we are doing a second ago, I'm going to just take off that finger. Now I'm going to circle because if you've noticed, see that dotted li straight dotted line that goes back to the origin? We want to make sure we understand what we're highlighting. But then it took off that piece, right? So it didn't, it didn't take some of this dark blue, it didn't take some of this salmon. It just affected the purple that it, um, that we selected. And then, of course, again, you start to see some of the frustration where it wants to make up its own border, its own line. Um, but that's just a little bit of working with it. So you can go back to merge and split, merge and split. Uh, Chris, you got anything to add on split tool? Uh, no, pretty, pretty comprehensive. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, now uh, we spent more time on that one because it's the more complex one. Merge tool is pretty straightforward. It, it really doesn't have any nuances that we found. Um, if you can't select it just yet, what you probably need to do is pick, um, you need to select one region. And then um, what you will do is you can hold down the control key or the shift key and you start to select multiple ones, right? And then merge, it's not really gonna have any options. You just click it once and you're done, and it glues those pieces together. So it doesn't redraw the borders, thank goodness. We got enough of that in the split tool, um, but now it's one it's one region. Cool? So so maybe, you know, maybe you're doing something similar to us where you say, I want this entire tooth to be a region. Well, maybe you'll split, use a split tool to make it tons of tons of little pieces. And then when you're all done, you just select them all one by one, click, 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 click. Maybe yeah, using the lasso tool, using some of these other things. Um, you know, you've got lots of options up here. We're not going to go through all of them. But then you just merge it, right? And you just get one solid tooth piece. Let me show you a quick example of that. Um, this, is our, this is what we ended up going for for our final reference data master model. So for the purposes of our study, we resegmented, um, and then we started combining. So we combined the palate into one region. See that? And we combined certain teeth, and we excluded restorations. We made restoration. This was an amalgam. We made that a separate region. Um, teeth that, that physically touched, we made the same region, right? This was a prepped tooth, so we made that a separate region. So you see, you can start, um, this is kind of the end goal. So it's kind of, almost like we're a baking show, right? This is kind of what you want to look at, look for at the end. Um, now, I just want to point out one thing, um, kind of a Let's see, how do you say this? Um, the, the computer can kind of get creative. And if you tell it to merge two regions that don't physically touch, it will find a way to do it. It kind of says, if there's a will, there's a way. So obviously, there is nothing. Let's see, I had an example a second ago. Right here. Okay, so see this big PNG that we were working with a second ago? Now, it doesn't look like it physically touches this other piece. But when we highlight over it, you can tell because they both highlight, it thinks that's the same region, right? But for a region to be the same, for an area to be the same region, it has to physically touch. So we don't know exactly how, but there's basically something maybe underlying this, like a little channel underneath or something that's connecting these two points together. So the computer made them physically touch. Uh, but you wouldn't know it just by looking at it, right? Until you highlight over it and say, oh, it actually thinks this region is the same as that region. Um, and so that's really important if you go to the merge tool. Let's say, um, let's say you, I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna do it, but let's say you are trying to combine all of the regions on this tooth right here. Well, look, we've got this gray region that goes around um, all the gingiva. And so let's say I, um, let's say I nick that as I'm trying to merge, right? I draw, I draw an, a circle and it nicks that. Well, then all of a sudden, this is gonna merge to this, right? It's gonna all combine into one big piece. Well, what if we did it over here and we were saying, I wanna get, I don't know why you do it, this little region, this palette, but we wanna merge this piece. Um, and so all of a sudden you're getting all these different colors up here and you just want this green. Well, you don't want this big green, but because you circled this and the computer, the program thinks that this island is connected to this island, what you're going to get is all of this merges and this random piece over here. Let's see if I can actually show you real fast. Um, let's see.
All right. So that's a different tool, and it's different than the lasso tool. But we, in that area, we wanted to all combine. Okay, we'll merge. Well, you know, it's not actually going to let me do that. Let's try something else. Oh, no, we're good. Okay, still selected. Okay. So um, now, see, so we're touching this area. And what it's going to do when we merge, you're going to find that all of this is also going to be combined to that. Let's make sure it does what I think it's doing. Okay, now look. Now we got this. And it thinks it's combined to this region. So um, there's not really a way to necessarily prevent that, but just as a, as a word of caution, if you're going around, especially in these interproximal areas, you will find the weirdest little fingers, slivers, whispers of a shape. And um, you'll be going through this and you'll highlight something on this tooth. And over here, you'll have a region that highlights, right? And so um, kind, of, kind of weird, kind of a little anomaly, but just make sure that you don't actually excuse me, accidentally end up merging a big group of teeth that you didn't mean to merge. So if that happens, maybe just undo, maybe split it again. Um, but that's why I, I made a note to say in this one, we only combined teeth that were physically touching because this tooth over here shouldn't touch this molar over here. They physically don't touch. So let's not convince the computer to do that. All right. I think that is about all on resegmenting. Yeah, uh, go back for a second, Jansen. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, he was mentioning uh, that you might accidentally have um, regions uh, that you don't intend to uh, be grouped together. Um, let me go back into the region tool. Um, is this one you were using? I was using the other model. Mm -hmm. This one here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so if you look at this model here, uh, it's uh, important to note, uh, just be careful when you're angling and um, with your angles that you uh, do your regions by and then also um, when we were talking about trimming the model we talked about this tool up here uh, where it uh, talks about visible only um, so if we take that off and we can actually use the lasso and much like select the whole tooth and that's going to get both sides it's going to select both sides of that tooth mm -hmm. all the way through the model uh, and so that can be uh, very helpful but it can also lead to uh, some other areas that uh, you don't intend to uh, include in your region. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all about angulation and that visible only. Awesome. Yep. All right. Some people have been asking about how to take some linear measurements. Uh, after this, we're going to talk about kind of a map or like a 3D compare, um, like, a to like a topography almost, but. Um, I just wanted to show just a little bit of what we know about linear dimensions. Um, to be honest, we don't know a ton about this. We really didn't use it for our project, um, but we'll show you uh, a little bit of what we know. So what you need is you need um, a couple specific points. You need some reference points. So um, what you're going to have is you need to simulate those or you need to make them. So this is um, kind of the quick and dirty thing that we found simulated CM endpoint, which is kind of a manufacturing term. But we can go in here, and then what that's going to do is let you place this little orange dot, right? You kind of see it right there in the middle of that um, that cursor right there. So let's, you know, we, we can place it right on this cusp tip. Place one right there. Now this is about a vector and stuff, and, and for what we're doing, that really doesn't matter. But obviously there's a lot that goes into this mode that you could play with. Um, okay, now so you got right there, it's kind of hiding, but sim point one. Let's go and put another one on this cusp tip. I mean, let's, let's, we want to measure how far apart these are. Rotate it around. All right, we're going to place one right there. Okay, so again, don't worry about, worry about the vector direction and stuff like that, but that's where it is in space. Um, and so now what we can do is we can go up here to the dimension tab, and you can say linear dimension. Pretty straightforward. And we, what we want to do is click on this point and click on this point. And then um, you've got a dimension right there. You've got 6.36 millimeters. Um, and that's that. Um, now, well, you know, probably what you wouldn't do is measure the model to itself. But once you imported another model on top of this, you could say, I want this cusp tip compared to the same cusp tip on the measured data model, right? And so you can measure them. Um, honestly, that's about all we know. Um, if you wanted to measure four points around the gingiva, around the CEJ of every single tooth, and you wanted to repeat that for every model, um, there's probably a quicker, more efficient, better way to do it. Um, 
but just to be pretty honest, that's um, that's about all we that's about all we ever needed to use for our research. So, so. yeah, uh, that's pretty much all we know. Um, like Jansen said, you may want to uh, do measurements uh, between the master and the um, the measured file or the test file. Uh, and then an easy way to do that is to hide one and put the put the point on one of them, and then um, and then hide that one, and then bring up the other one. Um, so instead of having them both up at the same time, that'll just kind of make things easier. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we've resegmented, right? And we've made these custom regions, and we're gonna see the benefit of it now. So what we're gonna do is, is uh, we're gonna talk about that, and then we're gonna show you the 3D compare function, which is kind of the point we've all been waiting for, right? We're finally gonna get some data. So um, this is the model that we used for our research project, right? It's already trimmed, we went through all the hours of resegmenting and making these different regions kind of with the end goal in mind, right? Now we're gonna uh, do again what we showed you a minute ago, we're gonna import. So right here we have a, something by the Emerald Scanner. So we're import that. And again, just to run through these, we do initial alignment, should be pretty quick. Awesome, got some funky colors. All right, and then the best fit alignment. Now remember, this is right before we just, um, we hit the check mark, but now we're gonna use this right here. So. Mine came up as checked. I guess that's because it knows that we has multiple regions now. But before it was just like this. It was just empty. And so we're going to say, well, you know what? Instead of aligning the whole model to the whole model, let's only consider certain areas, okay? Which would be hard tissue. You know, um, on our research, you know, something that we think would be great to do in the future would be to place an implant body in the palate, maybe, or something that's that you know is common, steady. It's not moving. You know the dimensions, um, and then you're going to align, you know, those two models to that implant body. You know, something like that. That would be a, a great use of of this feature. So we're going to select that only. And then just to clean up our view, make sure we know what we're really selecting, we're going to go over here and just hide the measured data. So this little eyeball is just something you click, it toggles on and off. So it's still there, it's still aligned, but we're just going to hide it and, and unhide it, right? And if you hit it so like um, on a category, it's going to hide that whole category. So maybe you had a category with lots of measured data. You just click that and hide all of them underneath that category. So we're just gonna hide that, and we're gonna we're gonna pick the ones that we want. So um, for purpose of this, let's just pick the things that are enamel. So we're gonna pick this region, this region, those teeth. That one was a prep too, so we're gonna ignore that. Perfect. Okay. So now when we run it, because we use selected data only, it's only gonna align to those regions. Okay. Perfect. Now, it nestled in there, but we forgot to turn it back on, so, but no no worries, it still ran what it needed to run. We're just going to show it now. So, um, if we had these side by side, maybe we could you know pull up some screenshots, and you would see that before, the palette uh, was a little more speckled, maybe, because um, it's a place where it went up and down, up and down. But now, because we've just a lot snapped these teeth, we see that the palettes actually differ, um, you know, kind of a little bit more significantly. So. Um, so, so again, that's that's why we resegmented. Really, really great feature. Throws a lot of people for a loop. Okay, now time for a three D compare. So what we're going to do is we're going to we want to get a lot of mass data from this that says how does this how does this work on a three D map? What are the deviations? And not just for one tiny data point, but for all the teeth or the, all the palette, right? Or or all this cusp tip or something like that. So it's this feature right here, three D compare. Um, okay, so you've got this thing right here, um, and right here you've got this selected data only. So again, great benefit of resegmenting. And we can click this, and um, you know, let's select the regions we want to compare. So let's say for this one, we just want to compare the palette. Um, okay, so you could select multiple regions. You could, you could turn this off and have it still compare the entire model. But we just want to look at the palette. So we're just going to click that. Okay, for purpose, let's uh, let's turn that back on. Um, this is a uh, this is something you may want to change in the future. Not going to go into a lot of detail now, but basically, when it when it wants to calculate the deviation, um, does it pick uh, the reference data point and the closest measured data point, which really works a lot, or does it say along normal normal right along perpendicular? Find me the point that's most perpendicular to this reference data point, and that's the one I want to calculate the deviation off of. So. Uh, we were in some statistics as we were going along to figure out which one was going to be more accurate, but that may be something you want to change. 
All right, now for this one, don't click the check mark, just click the arrow. So what this is gonna do is, is it's going to run the 3D compare, it's gonna give us kind of like a, a color-coded map, and then we're gonna be able to change some more settings after we actually run it. So if you click the check mark, it's gonna skip that. You just wanna click the arrow, say next. So it's gonna think. And now, here we have, we have a color-coded three, um, map of the deviations in 3D and it overlaid it onto our reference data, right? So what we're seeing is the, all the comparisons of all those thousands of little points. And you can even kind of see right there, it says about 0.4 millimeters is it is that point right there, that's its deviation. And you can measure every single data point, but we're getting a color-coded map. You got your scale over here and you've got some, um, some options, right? Some different displays, you color map, whisker map, um, yeah, let's come back to this in just a second, the averaging. Um, you got max and min, and all of these are gonna be reflected over here, right? So the data is the same, but maybe we only want to say, you know what, we're really interested in the 500 plus minus 500 micron range, so we're gonna take this down to 0.5. And if you hit tab, it will fill in the other one for you, put the minus sign, save you a couple seconds of work. So um, again, we're, the data is still the same, we didn't, crop out any data point that's bigger than this value but as far as the color is concerned we want to get a little bit more refined and show us what's in this orange area so we did that um, if you want a tolerance you can um, you can use these for our study we didn't really have a tolerance right so it's this green bar over here so we like to turn that off and again not changing the data um, okay so you got lots of different options right there now this is um, this is something that this color averaging is just kind of like a visual thing. And what you'll notice is, let's say you paid really good attention. Oh yeah, right down here. So let's say you paid really good attention to how you divided your line, right? And, um, but this, this color really doesn't follow the region line because what it did is it, the computer wanted to make a little bit prettier image, smooth out some of the border basically. And, um, and it just kind of, it kind of overextended or maybe it underextended a little bit. I'm, I'm guessing this is part of our palette region. I don't know for sure, but so you can change this slider and tell it, hey, average it some more. Do some more, um, whoa, look at that. Okay, so it averaged the border. It, it blended the border so much, it, it bled over. Now, this is really good if you want to take screenshots for your paper or you know just to show somebody a presentation or something. It can kind of be a misnomer because look, we didn't actually compare anything on the tooth. You know, we saw we just selected the palette, but it looks like the computer 3D compared all of this. So you just want to slide this and as it's going to change for even model to model, um, you want it to just kind of scale back to what's what's really right. So now see it this is the speckled, right? So we, we maybe kind of scale up a little bit more. Anyway, so that, that's what that color averaging is. Again, it doesn't change your data. None of the data changes, but um, but that's what that's doing. Down here, if you were to drag this up, you can get a preliminary look at your data. And we're gonna show you how to export all this data in a second into Excel. Um, but this is what we did. So we're on our first 3D compare. Again, on this chart is kind of a have a history almost of what we've been going through. And we, so we can, we can rename it. You've got your min deviation, your max, all these different things right here. Your average of all your positive deviations, your um, average of all your negative deviations. Um, and so there's some of your kind of rolled up data. Um, okay, now let me go back for one quick second and just show you something. Let's say you um, you can say there are, there are a couple random data points that are they're outliers so um without saving this just yet but we want to click the back arrow and and again this is where we were the uh, palette is still selected but here's this thing called max deviation so it's going to be set at auto which we think just means includes everything but let's say you know that there is not a deviation greater than 1.5 millimeters so you can set that include this arrow again run it and view it and you could you could look at your statistics before and after and see that hey look um your min deviation is is this i, I don't i didn't have quite a good enough memory to remember what it was a second ago but chances are with a 3d scan model you've got one random point in the palette that says it's five millimeters off but you look and it's you know that's not really realistic so you can um you know in a healthy way you can kind of tap down and kind of uh, contain some of those outlier data points so as soon as you click this check mark it's going to save uh, good news is at any point if you made a mistake or you want to maybe edit or change it, you can just go back over here. You can right click and you could say edit feature 
and you're going to be back in the in these settings, and you could uh, you could pick more regions or more data points or something like that. Um, you can also rename it. So one of the best things is that you can, let's say let's say palette three D compare. Okay, now you can do more than one three D compare which is great, and I wanna show you how we did that. We, we found um, that we could set up a lot of work on the front end and then really save ourselves a lot of time on the back end when we compared all the different 40 files. So, um, okay, so that's that. Let's say we wanna hide the color map. We can hit this, toggle it off. Doesn't really, doesn't really affect us, doesn't really matter. Um, okay, but let's do another 3D compare, and let's say we're just gonna do this amalgam. Let's just, actually, let's just do all the amalgams. So we're gonna hit that, we got one right there. I think that's composite, amalgam. All right, we're good. So those, those are all our amalgams. Um, and so now we're gonna do a 3D compare, but it's only gonna look at these regions. Again, the beauty of, of really having some forward thinking and, and setting up your regions the way you want. So we can click the arrow, don't click the check mark just yet. Now look, now, now our statistics only, um, are influenced by this, by these regions that we hit. So again, we've got some bleed over right here. Let's average it a little bit less. There we go. Now that's a, that's a pretty good looking screenshot um, for us to turn this up. Hey, hey, look, we compared these amalgams, and you know, let's say we had tolerance, they're all within tolerance, or something like that, right? So we can save that. We can go down here, and we can rename that. Right? And we can toggle these on and off. Look, we can show both of them. We show differently. But the beauty of having them in different, you know, as different entities, different compares, is that your statistics are separate. So, and they're, you know, segmented almost. So we could do a big roll up. Uh, we, you know, on our project, we probably had 10 of these. We had the entire arch. Then we had amalgams. Then we had um, prep teeth, non prep teeth, palette. And we, we made a whole list of these. Uh, for our 3D compares. So, Chris, anything to add on that before we go to the reports? Nope. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so we just finished our 3D compare and it's time to run the report. Now, this is a great point to uh, just make a quick note of something called custom views, and you're going to see this in the report in a minute. Um, but let's say you want to just do yourself a favor and get some screenshots, or you want you spend a lot of time orienting this model just right. You, rotating it like I'm doing right now and you really love this occlusal view and that's and that's exactly what you want to see in all of your um, all your reports so you get these down these little camera icons down here let's let me show you how to make a new one uh, this is viewpoint actually viewpoint so right down here is gonna show up as custom view now it does a couple things it, it's kind of like a picture you can, once I clicked it you can see the preview down there but it's also kind of saving your orientation that's a great thing to go back to um, let's say maybe you didn't need these for any kind of report you didn't need the screenshots but you want to save yourself from some work and so if I kind of turned around I get all around like this I can double click custom view and it snaps me back right to where it was including which things were toggled on and off and it's gonna reset me back right there. So that's a great feature. Um, and now this one is something that we use. It's reassign viewpoint. So each of these, um, each of these compares, if you click on it, it has kind of a preview down there. That's not really a view that we really cared about. It doesn't really give us a lot of information. So it's, um, we've got this rotated how we want it. And if I if I have that compare selected and I have the view I want, I click this, and it's basically gonna swap the view I see and put it into the one that's saved. So right there, perfect. Now you can zoom in and out. You, obviously you can kind of see it manipulate over here. Um, if we zoom in out, the custom view is a little bit smaller. Anyway, so you can kind of do yourself a favor, set those up um, ahead of time. If you go ahead and just get this written spot you want, you can just go down the list, click swap, swap, perfect. All right, so that's a great thing. Those are custom views. Now, um, uh, Sometimes you'll see a little thing in the corner right here that looks like a refresh arrow. It kind of looks like this arrow, actually. And you'll see it right here, or you'll see it pop up next to this little history of things that you've done. That's just kind of a refresh. Um, so some of these things that took some calculation, like a 3D compare it calculated, or a best fit, we did some calculation. If you change the model, like let's say in this, you go back and you trim some of something. You trim the measured data, and you cut out a section of the palette. Well, it's 
it's going to say, hey, I need to recalculate those things because you asked me to 3D compare the palette, but now the palette area has changed. So, so um, it's just a really good feature. It kind of knows, um, and you can either click the little refresh button next to each of the entities, or if you click this one that appears in the corner, then it'll just run them all for you. So that's a great thing. That's your best friend. Um, don't be afraid of that. If you see it, uh, you didn't do anything wrong, just click it, and it'll kind of recalculate all these going down. All right, now it's time to run a report and, ex and get to the point where we can export this data. So that is right here, generate a report. I'm on the quick start tab. I'm sure you can find it on another one as well. Let's generate the report. So you're gonna get two stages. The first stage is gonna ask you for some information and kind of what to fill in on your chart. So um, down here you have these different keywords, author, what your product is, right? Um, this is actually scan one, but this is pulling out from a different thing that we did. You know, so you can save yourself some work. Go ahead and put in your information. And then um, this side over here is going to be what you've s selected or what it thinks you want to select to include in your report. Okay. This means include it, take it from this side and include it on the right side. If you want to exclude something, you could click it and exclude it. So like the custom view, let's say I, I really didn't need that. That was just kind of for an orientation thing. I'm going to exclude that. Um, let's see, reference data, measure, all those things I think I want. You know what? The, the alignments, I don't really need to see a picture of the alignments. That's not really going to do me any good. I just know that it worked. All right, perfect. So you, you can talk back and forth. You can pick, you can uh, change the order and then you just want to go to generate. So this is this is kind of like um almost like an Adobe preview. It's kind of that's a good way to think of it. Is this is like your PDF version, so to speak. Um, and a lot of information you filled in comes in right here. You can always edit it. Um, it's not always the most user friendly sometimes, but I think uh, let's see right here. If you want to edit, you can't really double click, but if you wanted to change that, you could say edit. You could type in up here in this corner, and um, and you can change some things as they go along. We don't really need this disclaimer for what we're doing, so just want to kind of show you that we can manipulate this, right? We can we can change it as it's going before we actually save this and export it. All right, so right here, so these are just the things that we included. Uh, a second ago, it showed us that list, so we included reference data, some screenshots. Here's our measured data, our file name on it, and then here's our compares. Excuse me, here are our compares. Let's use correct English, and. Um, Okay, now now because I did the custom view and I wasn't super careful with what I did, I actually had both the amalgam and the palette showing with this. So it was a little careless mistake on my part. Um, you, we should go back and change that. But what you should get is you should just just see the 3D compare, right? Again, that was my mistake because I I overrode the uh, you know I overwrote the custom view and um, and told I wanted to show these things. But what you should get is you should just default to a picture that just includes that thing that you were looking at. So we get a color map, get your scale in here. Here's a histogram of all the data points and your um, and your mean or your median. Um, and then here's your data. So this is your raw data that you want to use. Um, and then again, if we get the next page, this is, uh, I'm not sure why it does this, but this is the same data, just in horizontal form as opposed to vertical. Then here's our other one. Again, I made the mistake about the view. Uh, you're seeing a little bit more color coding than you need. But as far as this data is concerned, it's only looking at the data inside those amalgams regions. So there's that. So this is a pretty short um, report. But see, uh, uh, the benefit of adding all the 3D compares from the beginning, not doing them individually, um, but going putting in all six or seven or however many you need, is that this report will generate all of them as you go down, um, all of them at one time. So then we're gonna export it, we're gonna save it. Um, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. We're gonna save as a PDF and then save it as an Excel. Uh, we like to do both. PDF was great to share with um, our professor and some other people. Excel was great because we were able to, um, you know, to select these cells, oops, uh, to select these cells and really draw that data out from all the reports that we ran uh, to run some statistics a little bit easier. So do with what you want with that. Um, this is a separate window, so you can X out of this. It's not going to close down your whole program. We're back to where we are. Okay, so that's running reports. Again, you can customize them. Um, let me just make a quick note. Let me just, uh, so for this palette, we should want to hide the amalgams, only show the palette, and this is how I would fix that problem I made just a second ago. And when we 
get to the amalgams. I'm going to only show the amalgams. I can rewrite that custom image. All right, there we are. So that's running reports. All right, we're coming to the end of this. About time to land the plane. But uh, before we do that, uh, just one of the coolest features we wanted to point out, and we kind of had to have some perspective um, of all the things that we've done. But this is one of the one of the best features that we found in Geomagic. Uh, really saved us so much time and energy. Basically, um, as you're going, right, you've got this history log on the side of the initial alignment, the best fit alignment, you know, which regions you selected for the best fit. You've got your different compares that you put out there. You, you may have even used custom views. You got all this stuff saved on the side. And um, I don't know if you, there's a computer lingo word right a programming term called macro right and and um, if that's familiar to you it's basically what it's doing is it's kind of writing a macro for you in the background so that if you want to repeat all these steps identical to how you just did them before um, it, it's it's easy with the click of a button you can run all of those again but with a different measured data model so what that does is is you put you put the effort in on the front end where you resegment and you you know region it exactly how you want, you compare with the with the specifications and the upper limits and the deviations and the colors that you want, and then swapping out what I have right here, this emerald scan one for another scan, another intraoral scan becomes a breeze, and then it'll recalculate all these for you, and then all you have to do is quick generate report. So, really amazing feature, save you so much time. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. It only takes a second. Basically, what you do is you go to this home tab right up here, and you want to replace measured data. So um, for our project, we had six different scanner, or no, eight different scanners, and five scans a piece. So we just took two of them from that. So let's say we have Emerald Scan Two. Take that. Now you can you have two options, but this is this is the money button right here. This run inspection process, import only. Which I'll show you that real fast. Um, let's do this. Let's go. Yep. If I just import only, what it's going to do is it's going to bring it in, but it's not going to run those calculations. So it's just going to put the model on there. And this is these are the refresh buttons that we were talking about a second ago, right? It's saying, okay, now you've got new data. So I need to do an initial alignment again. I need to refresh what the best fit alignment, all these things right here. And this is kind of the master button. If you were to click this, it would run all of those. So we could do that. We could say import only and then refresh all the calculations. Or you, what you could do, let me kind of pretend like we're undoing right here, we should import that. Or what you could do is you could click that first button, that money button I talked about, and it's gonna do both in one. Okay, so, so we're pretending we were, just how we were a second ago, we had our Emerald 1 scan, we just got our first report, we're gonna do Emerald scan 2. We're gonna click Run Inspection Process. So not only is it gonna import, but it's gonna go ahead and do the initial alignment. It's gonna go ahead and do the best fit alignment, and you're gonna see progress right here. It goes really fast. Honestly, we, we found with all of our compares, it only took a max of about a minute and a half, maybe two minutes. Okay, so right here, we've got same master, new emerald scan. If you look at back here, uh, you can tell it's a little different. Um, but we it went ahead and ran the 3D compares. And if you remember our colors last time, these are a little bit different. Um, so that's really awesome. So all I did was click measured, replace measured data, it went ahead and recalculated all these things, and then I hit generate report right here. It's kind of a two-step process, right? So if you're like us and you have 40 different files to go through, um, it's just a two-step process. You replace measured data, generate report, you generate it, you export it, PDF and Excel, and then you go back again. And so that even though you might have spent a couple of hours setting it up, it only takes a minute, minute and a half to replace with another uh, thing right there. So again, if you're a computer whiz, it's kind of like a kind of like a macro. It's recording. It's kind of thinking of all the steps that you did um, and all all the details that you put in beforehand. Um, really, really great feature. It lets you run through a whole mess of data um, really fast. So that's it, guys. Thanks for listening. This is kind of the end. We're landing the plane. Um, thanks for uh, the time and for being curious of how this works. I um, just want to give a quick shout out to the boys, to the Geomagic reps. Um, we. 
just have only the best things to say about them. They were incredible. There were a couple questions we had. We got in contact with them and just encourage you to do the same. If you have any questions, um, obviously this is a complex software with all sorts of features that we haven't even touched and we didn't really need for our project, but they are, they go the extra mile, man. They, um, they sent us some videos. They did some screen recordings like we're doing now. They walked us through things on the phone. They were so helpful and they know um, kind of the medical and dental world too. That's not something they're for and they're foreign to them. So uh, feel free to reach out to them anytime. We only have the best things to say about them. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Thanks.